is a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome on this beautiful fourth Sunday after Pentecost. If there's anyone out in the parking lot, can you give us a honk? Wonderful. Thank you for joining us and thank you to all of you joining us at home. A few announcements before we begin our service. In July and August upper rooms are available on the radiators. Holy Communion will be celebrated here next Sunday. Uh, the Honor America Days float uh, will uh, soon be in progress. So if you would like to uh, help out with that uh, team, please contact Bruce Warcup and we'll get a date set as to how we're going to decorate the float this year. That will, the Honor America Days uh, parade is July, uh, the last Saturday in July. Also, the senior choir will be on hiatus until the fall, and we will look uh, forward to special summer music. Uh, today's their last official day, singing with us uh, before they take a well-deserved summer break. That is all the announcements I have for you this morning. So if you will, please prepare your hearts and minds for worship as we listen to our prelude this morning. Please join me in our call to worship this morning. Not one sparrow will fall to the ground apart from their creator. God tells us we are of more value than many sparrows. God knows us and loves us. Even the hairs of our head are all counted. We praise you, O oh God. Grateful are we for your love and care. Grateful are we to share your love and grace. Our gathering hymn this morning is number 386, O oh, for a World.
Before we hear the word read and proclaimed, let us prepare our hearts through the confession of our individual and collective sins, so that way we may be more open to hearing God's word of life. You send us God of the Great Commission, but we hedge and hesitate. Forgive our fear and our excuses. We are witnesses of your grace and glory, but allow others to silence our praise. We imprison ourselves with doubt and shame and, and fail to shine your light for all to see. Forgive our fears, free our testimony, help us be your faithful disciples. We now take a few moments of silence for private individual confession. Amen. Through Christ's death and resurrection, we are a new creation, ready to sing God's glory and testify to God's grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and freed. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Beloved God, we pray this morning that we may experience that peace passes all understanding, that we may experience you, the living peace of our world. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you, and also with you. Set free by God's grace, let us share God's peace with one another. Be seated. As we prepare to hear God's word, let us pray for illumination. Savior God, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path on this discipleship road. Walk with us, guide us with your wisdom and grace. Open us to discerning your will and your way. Amen. In baptism, we were incorporated into the reality of Christ's death and resurrection. We have been made new in Christ through his death and resurrection to live free from sin. Though we may experience rejection, frustration, division, and death, God's grace and love make us a new creation each day. We now read from Romans chapter 6, verses 1b through 11. What then are we to say? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may be abound? By no means. How can he who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you all must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
Jesus warns his disciples that their ministry in his name will meet with opposition and even stark division. However, he assures them that they need not fear, for the truth will come to light. Life is found in Christ. We now read from Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 through 39. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Belizebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret will have not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are more of value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one old household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The word of the Lord. see any little children with us this morning, so I think we're going to forego the children's sermon, so let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts 
be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This week's lectionary text is a challenging one that conveys exactly how hard Jesus' call to discipleship can be. So often in life we might say, I want to be just like fill in the blank when I grow up. Jesus was the model of what it means to follow God completely. So when we say we want to be just like Jesus, we could have no better person to emulate. Yet to be like Jesus means that we too will at times suffer for the sake of the kingdom of God. Jesus' desire was for peace and unity. And yet he said, do not think I have come to bring peace, but a sword. Why would Jesus advocate such division? He wasn't advocating division, but telling us that true peace doesn't come easily. He was stating the fact that when he told people the truth of God's love, some would be offended because it would challenge the things they always believed. And human beings don't normally like their ideas challenged. Jesus' good news was good news to the poor and the oppressed and the outcast, but it wasn't always good news to others. It was not good news to those who were comfortable at the expense of others or those who used their power over others to get what they wanted. Jesus was calling people out by stating that their secrets would eventually be made known. Jesus uncovered the truth about the consequences of hurting one another through our beliefs and our actions and our systems of injustice that create divisions. To some, it incites anger, and others, eventually, it caused them to consider killing him. Eventually, it led to his death. And yet the truth was so important to him. Real, lasting peace usually is arrived at through great conflict. Jesus' words are meant to wake us up as well, to realize that following Jesus sometimes means we have to make a choice between what we want to do and what God wants us to do. Our families, our friends, our society may want us to put other things first in our lives, but Jesus says we have to put the kingdom of God first. That needs to be our priority. And this may not always bring peace initially. It may cause conflict, and Jesus urges us not to be afraid of that conflict. If we stay the course of truth, real transformation is possible. Growth can't happen without conflict. A stagnant pond is not a peaceful and healthy place. And silence isn't always the best choice. Speaking the truth may cut and divide like a sword, but like a surgeon's knife cutting away a harmful disease, it's necessary in order to bring true healing and peace. Within ourselves and our churches and our communities, hatred and lies, racism and injustice need to be cut away in order for healing to begin. People didn't always want to hear what Jesus had to say, and so his words did bring division, but he didn't back down. That had to be incredibly lonely and difficult for him at times. He knew that telling the truth may eventually get him killed, and it did. And yet he persisted. He wanted everyone to experience a relationship with God through him, and therefore he wasn't going to just tell people what they wanted to hear. He believed that every person was valuable, valuable enough to be honest with them. Jesus says later in Matthew 25, whatever you do to the least of these, you do to me. And just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, 
you did not do it to me. We are called through our baptism to carry on the mission of Jesus. Do we still want to be just like him? This is the question that St. Paul in his letter to the Romans addresses. Through our baptism, we have become united with Christ in his death and resurrection. It means that we have expectations as Christians, not just to model, but to live as Christ lived, since we are united with him. It involves daily repentance, an acknowledgement of our sins, and a willingness to recommit to our baptismal promises, something that we will do in our service today as our remaining elders and deacon are installed. It first means being honest with ourselves. It's why we begin each worship service with confession, because the human reality of sin is always trying to pull us away from God. Sin always tries to put us first. Confessing and repenting our sins means that we bring to light those things that we try to hide from others and ourselves. God already knows these things anyway. He knows us intimately, down to how many hairs are on our head. And so we need to honestly acknowledge our sins and then trust in God's forgiveness and know that deep down in our souls again, that we are God's beloved. And then we can go forward in this covenant relationship with God and continue to do the work that Christ calls us to do, the work of letting all people know that God loves them intimately as well. Jesus spent his whole life doing that. He didn't just say that all people matter. He named them specifically, one by one, as people God loved. He named the Samaritans who were seen as outcasts and enemies of people. He saw them worthy of love. He sat with the unnamed woman at the well and named her life story and named her as beloved by God. He named the man born blind and innocent and not responsible for his suffering. And he named him beloved by God. Jesus made friends with the outcasts, the sinners, the tax collectors, the people that others did not want to associate with in life, and let them know that they mattered to God, mattered even more than the smallest of sparrows. If we want to be just like Jesus, then we are called to do the same. So who are the people right now in this world who are suffering? Who are those in our own communities who are suffering? Who are the ones that are ready to give up hope because life seems so dismal? They need to know that they matter. And we need to know that we matter. Jesus says we do and urges us not to give up when conflict arises. We must stay the course and seek the truth, and real peace will eventually arrive. And like the oyster who is irritated by the sand getting in its shell, eventually it will lead to a beautiful pearl of great value. Let us pray. Holy God, calm our fears when conflict arises that we may know your spirit is at work in every situation of our lives. Open our ears to truly hear one another. Open our eyes to truly see one another. Open our hearts to truly forgive and embrace one another in your divine love, so that more and more we may be reflections of you, just like Jesus. Amen.
be seated. We now continue our service with the ordination and installation of our officers. And so I call Muffy Engelbert, Bill Nee, Melanie Spinelli, and their families to come forward at this time. And you can all just gather around the baptismal font, please. There are varieties of gifts, but it is the same Spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who is served. God works through each person in a unique way, but it is God's purpose that is accomplished. To each is given a gift of the Spirit to be used for the common good. Together we are the body of Christ, and individually members of we are all called into the Church of Jesus Christ by baptism and marked as Christ's own by the Holy Spirit. This is our common calling, to be disciples of Jesus Christ and servants of our servant Lord. Within the community of the Church, some are called to particular service as deacons, as ruling elders, and as ministers of word and sacrament. Ordination is Christ's gift to the Church assuring that his ministry continues among us. Through ordination, God provides for acts of care and compassion in the world, for the ordering and governance of the church, and for the preaching of the word and celebration of the sacraments. Representing the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, the session of First Presbyterian Church now ordains Melanie Spinelli to ministry as deacon and installs her to active service in this congregation. The session also installs to active service those who have previously been ordained, ruling elders Muffy Engelbert and Bill Nee. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, believe in God the, Father the Father Almighty, Almighty creator of, of heaven, heaven and earth. earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I believe, I believe in, in Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, God's, God's only, only Son, Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was, was crucified, died, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. And the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe, I believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Holy, Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life, life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to, to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, with joy we give you thanks and praise. We praise you for leading your people Israel through the waters of the sea, out of bondage and into freedom in the land of your promise. We praise you for sending Jesus, your Son, who for us was baptized in the waters of the Jordan and was anointed as the Christ by your Holy Spirit. Through the baptism of his death and resurrection, you set us free from the bondage of sin and death and give us cleansing and rebirth. We praise you for pouring out your Holy Spirit, who teaches us and leads us into all truth, filling us with a variety of gifts that we might proclaim the gospel to all nations and serve you as a royal priesthood. We rejoice that you have claimed us in our baptism and anointed us for service in Christ's name, 
and that by your grace we are born anew. By your Holy Spirit, renew us, that we may be empowered to do your will and continue forever in the risen life of Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all glory and honor now and forever. Amen. Remember your baptism and be thankful. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Melanie, Muffy, and Bill, in baptism you were claimed by the love of God, clothed in the grace of Jesus Christ and anointed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit to share Christ's mission in the world. Now you are called by God through the voice of the church for new service and ministry in Jesus' name. In accordance with the Constitution of the Presbyterian Church, show your commitment to this calling by responding to these questions. Do you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, acknowledge Him Lord of all and Head of the Church, and through Him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If so, please respond, I do. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be, by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's words to you? If so, please respond, I do. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? If so, please respond, I do and I will. Will you fulfill your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and continually guided by our confessions? If so, please respond, I will. Will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? If so, please respond, I will. Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors and work for the reconciliation of the world? If so, please respond, I will. Do you promise to further the peace, unity and purity of the church? If so, please respond, I do. And will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? If so, please respond, I will. Ruling elders, will you be a faithful ruling elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, <coughs> nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in councils of the church, and in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? If so, please respond, I will. And to our deacon, will you be a faithful deacon, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? If so, please respond, I will. Do we, the members of the church, accept Melanie Spinelli, Muffy Engelbert, and Bill Nee as ruling elders and deacons, chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? If so, please respond, we do. We do. Do we agree to pray for them, to encourage them, to respect their decisions, and to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church? If so, please respond, we do. We do. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, with joy we give you thanks and praise. Throughout the ages and in every place, you have chosen servants from among your people to point the way to salvation by your grace. We are grateful for ancestors in the faith who followed without fear, placing their trust in you alone, for judges and monarchs who ruled in righteousness and peace, for prophets and apostles who spoke your bold words of mercy and of truth, for leaders and teachers in every age who have nurtured your people in faith 
and faithfulness. Above all, we praise you for Jesus Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life to set others free. Anointed by your Holy Spirit, he proclaimed your reign on earth, revealing your saving love in all he said and did. Amen. Now I invite Melanie, who is to be ordained, to come forward over here. And I ask the elders to surround her, and we will pray and lay our hands on her, and you are free to join us as well. Rob? Yep, that's fine. Gracious God, pour out your spirit upon your servant Melanie, whom you have now called by baptism as your own. Grant her the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. We ask you to pour your Holy Spirit upon her, that she may serve you faithfully and grow in your grace and your love and your peace. Amen. You may now face the congregation. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your servants, Muffy and Bill and Melanie, who you have called. Help them to rely on the gifts of your spirit and to follow Christ faithfully in this calling. Give all your servants a spirit of truthfulness that they may show the compassion of Christ in the actions of daily living and rightfully govern your people. Pour out your spirit of power and truth upon your whole church, that we may be for you a holy people, baptized to serve you in the world. S sustain your church and ministry. Ground us in the gospel. Secure our hope in Christ. Strengthen our service to the outcast. And increase our love for one another. Show us the transforming power of your grace in our life together, that we may be effective servants of the gospel offering a compelling witness in the world to the good news of Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. You may say the last part here. No, okay. I hereby declare Melanie Spinelli as deacon and Muffy Engelbert and Bill Nee as elders ordained to ministries of governance and service in the church of Jesus Christ for this congregation. Be faithful and true in your ministry so that your whole life will bear witness to the crucified and risen Christ. And now a charge from 1 Peter chapter 4. Be serious and discipline yourselves for the sake of your prayers. Above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, Serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Whoever speaks must do so as one speaking the very words of God. Whoever serves must do so with the strength that God supplies, so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever. And now let us offer our congratulations to all our ruling and deacons. I have certificates for each one of you. All right. Okay, Bill. Oh, here you go. Thank you. And here is uh, Muffy's, and yours is right here. We now continue with our offering. St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews tells us, do good and share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. With gratitude and thanksgiving, let us offer back to God what God has first given us.
Let us pray. Take our hearts, our hands, our gifts, holy God. Mold us, shape us, send us, so that we might be your body in the world that you so love. Amen. Please be seated. In gratitude for all of God's generosity, we take time now to share our joys and thanks. Those celebrating birthdays this week include Paul Reggie, Liz Clough, Michelle Dolan, Don Jones, and Noreen Sexton. So happy birthday to all of you. Ward and Nancy Beeman and Dave and Lisa Dombrowski also have anniversaries this week, so happy anniversary. Congratulations to the Stedman and Conover families on the birth of Mary Stedman's great-grandson. And she is on her way south as we speak to be with the new baby. We also give thanks uh, to Whitesboro Presbyterian Church. Even though it was dissolved at that service, they wanted to pass on some of the items that meant so much to their church. And we, uh, our church is a recipient of these pyramids here you see on the table and on the uh, lectern. They gave us a variety of these in many different colors so that their legacy can continue in the many churches in our presbytery. And we give thanks uh, for that wonderful gift that they have given us. And now I'm gonna go around our congregation and see what things you have to be grateful for and a joy you'd like to share with us but first, before I do that, uh, since this is the last Sunday that the choir has sung with us, I just want to say uh, a special thanks to our choir who worked so hard, and for Kathy Austin, our new senior choir director, and for Andrea, our wonderful organist. Let us all give them a huge round of applause. So who has something they would like to share? All right. Here you go. Good morning, everyone. Um, the one joy I have is Cooper Engelbert graduated yesterday, and my husband held off the rain. So we had a blessed day. But for the congregation, I want you to know a little bit about what's happening. Uh, starting the 3rd of July, all the carpeting on the other side will start to be replaced. So Chico will be pulling all the carpeting out this week. Um, on this nice hot Sunday, I want you to know we are working on air conditioning. Dave Collis has been here. He's measured. Um, and the first thing we need is a whole new electrical uh, system coming into the church. However, I'm hoping session tomorrow, those of you on session, please vote yes. I'm hoping we can do them simultaneously. Put the electrical in, but have them come and put the air conditioners in. So once the air conditioner, so then sometime somebody must plug it in. I have no idea how the whole system works. But I want you to know it is being done. And the air conditioning for the parlor was put in this last week, and they just have to come in and, I don't know, find the plug? I don't, I don't know about electrical. Chico will take care of it. But it's in in the parlor. So we are moving forward, um, and I, I want you to know, and we all need to pray for Ray Tucker, who is um, in the hospital, and we are thinking of him. And, uh, those of us on Building and Grounds have inherited his list, and we will try to move forward. If anybody has any questions, you can ask me, and I will go find the answers. Thank you so much, and thank you for the Building and Ground Committee who's working so tirelessly to work on all these things in our church. Thank you. Yes. Hi. I want to thank Paul and Helen it's a, for the rides to church and other events. I'm very thankful for that. Thank you. Thank you, Helen and Paul. And we're so grateful that you are here. Wonderful. All right, over here, we have another hand. So on Monday, I went kayaking with Sue Hansen, 
and I am so grateful that I, that I got blessed with this wonderful work. Thank you so much, Sue Hansen, for taking me out. We saw eagle. We saw an eagle, and we took some pictures, and it was just a beautiful day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing that joy. Thank you. All right, over here. Yeah, I'd like to. Uh, uh, I think I'm getting older because my grandson's getting. Uh, he's taller than me, so he just graduated, and he's going into service next week in the army. So. Uh, I'm so proud of him. Thank you so much. Wonderful news. Somebody else. I saw another hand. Yes. I have a good friend, Arnie, who's in his late 80s, and uh, Friday he was admitted to St. E's with turned out to be TIA's many strokes, but the good news is apparently he's doing well and should be released today, which I'm thankful. Thank you. Prayers will continue. Anybody else? Oh, over here. All right. I am grateful that Helen returned from Paris safe and sound this, par this past week. Uh, it just is a little confusing because she says merci instead of thank you these days, but I'm getting used to it. And also I would like to extend a very happy birthday to my lovely bride. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Welcome back and happy birthday. Who else? Over here. Yeah. This is funny. Um, I'm coming up from New York onto my mom's farm, Mary Conover, and uh, from Tennessee I came up, and I'm just here so sister can go down and I can spend a good majority of time for the summer to be up here. Anyway, my brother had, at his house, he's got like eight cats. He had, the cat had four kittens, and they were trying to get, I took pictures of them and posted them at Fryhoffers. A lady called, and she took two of them, and then she took our number and said she was going to, you know, give it to her, her co-worker took the other two, so we don't have any kittens, and I was praying that they would go together, you know, a bit, you know. So and it all worked out, and I said, Lord, answers prayers. <laughs> so thankful. I just wanted to announce that Bill and I are excited about being back in Rome. We arrived safely yesterday late afternoon. And I had a couple people from church offer to pick us up, but we got a ride with a friend. So I appreciate everybody who's contacted me during these four and a half months. I was going to be gone for five weeks, uh, and it kind of got extended, but it's really nice to be back and see everybody. And we're so glad that you are both back, and you came back safe and sound. Wonderful. Skip and I are very happy to have our daughter from California <laughs> visiting us this week. It was great. Wonderful. Glad that you are here, and I know your parents are so grateful. So wonderful. Thank you. Well, thank you all for sharing all of these wonderful joys. There is so much we have to be grateful for. And I, in particular, am grateful for all of you for the wonderful ministry that you do here at First Presbyterian Church. And now let us turn our attention to praying for those in need. Let us pray. Trusting in your abundant mercy, O God, we offer our prayers for a world in need. Holy God, you compel your church to speak the truth that challenges false notions of peace. Prevail upon us with the good news of Christ's death and resurrection, that we are compelled to share the gospel with all the world. We pray today for all of our elders and deacons and for leaders in all your churches. We pray today for Nichols Memorial Presbyterian Church in Old Forge. Unite all churches in your mission and make your people one. God of creation, under your watch not even a sparrow goes unnoticed. Safeguard planet and animal habitats threatened by melting glaciers, rising oceans and receding coastlines. Amplify the voices of those calling for responsible stewardship of the Earth's resources, for it is not ours, but we have been entrusted by you to care for it. God of peace, our world is enduring violence and destruction. Rescue your people in nations experiencing conflict or crisis. Thwart the efforts of those who sow chaos and terror 
and guide those working to bring about peace and reconciliation. Healing God, you have counted even the hairs of our heads. Reassure anyone experiencing poverty, homelessness, unemployment, or exploitation that every life has value. Look favorably upon all who struggle in body, mind, or spirit, especially Ray Tucker, Linda Davis, Kelly Kimball, Sally Adams, Carol Berger, Rachel Hayes, Andrea's sister Karen, Sue Moses, and Jim Clough. We pray for Aurelio and Marcia Cacabilios, for Vi Head and Eunice Edwards, Sarah Griffiths, Arlene Pfeiffer, Roberta Burt, Ralph Pazula, Maxine Strong, Chris Hayden, Carol Lee, Brittany Cataldo, Cara, Carrie Scacia's friend Marie, Lucy, the cousin of Keith Butters, and for Dorothy Hausman. We pray for Barbara Crum and Patty Dunham, Maxine Strong's son John, the grandchildren of Kirk and Linda Hinman, especially Spencer, Dan Zimmerman, and all of our members in nursing and residential care facilities. We pray for those who grieve, and especially for the family of Reverend Jim Height, whose celebration of life was yesterday, and what a beautiful celebration of life it was, O oh God. Even when we experience rejection and loss, your love invites us to new life. We give you thanks for all the saints whose faithful confession inspired our own discipleship and raise us with them to eternal life. God of life, this world is yours and we live according to your abundance. Wherever we wander during these summer days, watch over our travels. May we reach our destination safely and make our journeys with wonder at the blessings bestowed upon us by your amazing grace. You give us enough to share. Remind us of those who don't have enough and our ability to make a difference in their lives. We know that you hear our prayers and answer in your right time, O oh God. And so gathered together by your Holy Spirit, we confidently pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our sending hymn this morning is number 434. Today we are called to be disciples.
May the grace, hope, peace, and love of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, be with us all now and always. Amen. As we leave this house of worship, may we feel the blessing of God upon us and share that with others. May we walk the path of Jesus, accompanying those in need of solidarity. And may we be guided by the Holy Spirit to be the disciples we have called to be, proclaiming in word and deed that God is good all the time.